This video is brought to you by the Corsair Obsidian 350D Micro ATX case. Exceptional expansion and cooling flexibility for compact, high-performance PCs. Visit Corsair.com Obsidian to learn more. Welcome to my unboxing and first look at something where... Oh, am I just trolling you guys? This is... No, no, don't worry. What's actually in here is not an 8800 GT. This is the GeForce GTX 770 from NVIDIA. So this is a new generation product, a 700 series product, but what you'll notice is it actually shares a lot in common with the last generation GTX 680. So it has the same GK104 core, so that is it to say that it has a 256-bit memory bus. The stock card has 2 gigs of RAM, but there are non-reference cards that are going to be available with up to 4 gigs of RAM. However, the RAM is where the really special part of this video card really comes into play, because this is the first graphics card on Earth to ship with 7 gigahertz GDDR5. What that means is more memory bandwidth, and we've actually already done a fair bit of testing on this card, so what I can tell you right now is that, yeah, the higher clock speeds versus the GTX 680, yeah, this is a 70 class card that is pretty much a replacement for the last generation flagship GTX 680, except that it's actually even faster. So yeah, it's got higher clock speeds, but particularly at higher resolution, so greater than 1080p, that extra memory bandwidth helps a lot for it to really pull ahead of the GTX 680. It also supports some other new cool 700 series features such as GPU Boost 2. So GPU Boost 2 allows this card instead of relying just on information about voltage, clock speed, and then the overall power target of the board now is able to compensate for temperature as well. So if you tell it GTX 670, I am comfortable with you running at 90 degrees, it'll kind of go okay roger dodger and then if you put a water block on it, so it's running at, you know, 45 degrees no matter what you do, then it will continue to strive to turbo itself up to the absolute maximum clock speed that it can sustain all the time no matter what. Now the GeForce experience came out of beta with GTX 780 and obviously it supports the GTX 770 as well. What that means is you've always got the latest drivers and you've got recommendations for the settings that you should run in the various games you have on your computer so that you're never running it wrong. I mean, honestly, my little brother's a great case of this. I hope he's not watching this video, but I gave the kid a GTX 275. This was a couple years ago, back when that was like you know, a pretty decent card. And I go over and he's running some Call of Duty game at low details at like 1280 by 800 or something ridiculous like that on his 1080p monitor. I'm just, I'm looking at the kid, I'm like, really? You're not, like, it's running at like 300 frames per second. You can actually turn the details up. I turn the game up and he's like, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. So GeForce Experience maybe isn't for you the viewer right now. Maybe it's not for you at all. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you want to dial in your own settings. Personally, I do. But maybe it's for someone that you're recommending a card for where you know that they're just not capable of remembering to upgrade their own drivers or choose their own settings. So there you go. I hope my brother's not watching this. Um, also, NVIDIA is going to be introducing a new feature in GeForce Experience called Shadow Play, which is going to allow you to use the built-in H.264 encoder on your card at a nominal performance hit, maybe about 5%, to record your gameplay up to the last 20 minutes of gameplay on the fly all the time, so you never miss a moment when you're making up your gameplay videos or, or whatever else. Very cool stuff. All the usual NVIDIA technologies are supported. SLI up to three-way. Now NVIDIA, yeah, they have cards that support four-way, but they're really not talking about four-way SLI anymore. It really doesn't scale very well. Two-way SLI scales great on this card. Three-way SLI is going to scale okay at higher resolutions. Four-way SLI tends to not scale that much. So it does support all the SLIs, whichever ones you want. It has a 6-pin and 8-pin power adapter. The TDP of this card is slightly higher than the GTX 680 that it comes in and replaces, but don't worry because the price is lower, which is what's going to make this card so attractive, is that not only do you get that GTX 680 performance, but I've seen a lot of speculation that from the leaked pictures of GTX 670 that NVIDIA was building not quite the same 
level of quality of a cooler that they put on the Titan and the 780 with its aluminum construction and polycarbonate window on the aluminum fins with the noise dampened fan that's actually got an updated profile that makes the car not only run fast but also incredibly quietly and illuminated GeForce GTX logo on the top all of that is false this features the same level of quality of cool cool the same cool cooler that has a high level of quality that's what i meant to say and it looks absolutely outstanding in your rig and now you can i mean i have heard people buy titans because they love the way it looks now you can get the look and a lot of the performance for a significantly lower cost with that said no this card is not gk 110 based it is not in the same league as titan and gtx 780 but what it does do is it comes in at an attractive price point and it is able to deliver better performance than the outgoing gtx 680 particularly at higher resolutions you've got full support for nvidia 3d vision surround allowing you to have up to three plus one display so three in surround with one auxiliary display and of course stereo 3d on support 3D Vision enabled monitors, PCI Express 3.0 interface is down here on the bottom, and most of the exhaust from this card is going to go out the back of your case, while some of it will go out these fins here, and that's going to help cool some of the voltage regulation modules on the PCB itself. I think that pretty much does it for my GTX 770 overview. Don't forget to check out my review content for this card as well, where we walk you through the nitty gritty of its performance. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for unboxings, reviews and other computer videos.